The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My guest this hour is Dr. Janice Bayless. Uh, Dr. Bayless is a retired reading specialist teacher and community college dream study instructor. In 1959, her carpool passenger called at 6 a.m. asking to change their meeting spot. That same morning at 7 a.m., Mabel was getting into Janice's car around the corner. They heard a large crash. As they rounded the corner to pass their regular meeting place, they saw a small airplane had landed upside down in the corner of the parking lot where they would have been. Dr. Bayless is joining me now. Dr. Bayless, tell me more about this. What was it that changed Mabel's mind? Well, uh, I asked her, how did you know? Yeah. And she said, I dreamed it last night. I, I, and, you know, my kids in the back seat said, mm-hmm. wow, you know. I mean, it was just so amazing to, to find that the dream mind could look forward My in goodness. time. It is, it was, I, I'm sorry, dear. I just find this fascinating. Okay. Yeah, that, and a doctor, as, as a dream instructor, have you heard about this? Is this common practice where people can foretell what's going to happen in the future through dreams? Well, I did some studying with Edgar Cayce's uh, group and uh, my own students, of Mm -hmm. course, and I uh, tabulated how many of those dreams were precognitive. Yes. They came out 23%. Holy cow. 23%. Now... It's one of the things that Dream Mind can do. Where did you... Where did your interest in dreams come from, uh, Dr. Bayless? Well, from that... Precognitive dream of Mabel. My God, the dreamy mind can do that. What else can it do? And, you know, I just Mm -hmm. started finding out what I could find out. All I could find was uh, Freud and Jung. And um, finally, I found Edgar Casey's material. And I went to the Casey Mm -hmm. uh, in Virginia Beach and studied with them and just. I'm teaching, you know, if you want to learn something, teach it. If you want to learn something, So I learned a lot from my students. Dreams are very practical. That's what I found out. When somebody says to you, I'm a dreamer, is that a compliment to the person? (laughs) Well, there's two kinds of dreams. There's night dreams Mm -hmm. and there's day dreams. And, but, uh, even the day dreams are, are, can be useful they can be a waste of time but they can also be very useful so but night dreams are meant to be useful really you know so many people say that in their night dreams or with their night dreams they can actually communicate with those on the other side or those who have departed have you found this to be the case yes i have uh sometimes the deceased person is in the dream just to for something that the dreamer associates mm-hmm. with them. Wow. But occasionally it has happened. One of, one of the examples is Dante was writing Divine Comedy and he passed away before it was quite finished. Well, he was been working on the last part, but he put it away every night and the family couldn't find the ending. All right, Doctor, so Dante, pl- Doctor please stand by. Doing- Doctor, stand by. You and I have to take your commercial break. We'll be right back. Exo Nation, Dr. Okay. Janice Bayless is yes. our special guest. Amazon.com forward slash DP forward slash one four six six two one nine two four six. And uh, Dr. Bayless and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break talking about dreams 
as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing. Old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is Dr. Janice Bayless. We're talking about dreams this hour. And, uh, Doctor, can people from the other side or newly, those who have newly or just passed away, actually communicate with us in our dreams? Yes. As I was saying, Dante Mm -hmm. had uh, almost finished Divine Comedy. Actually, he had kind of finished it. But he put it away. Every, writers are funny about their stuff. They don't want them, you know, exposed until they're ready. Mm-hmm. So he had put it away and nobody in the family knew where it was. So uh, the, the family looked all over and then one night his son dreamed that his father, Dante, came to him in a dream and showed him where the end of the manuscript was. It was behind a brick, a loose brick, in a wall in the, their house, but who would have looked? Be, who would have known the brick was loose? Only Dante. Oh. There are a few other, you know, instances. Give me, give where, me some more examples, Doctor. Well, uh, an, an, another man had written his will, mm-hmm. and he, he'd been working on it with his lawyer, and uh, he put it in the pocket of his coat not realizing that the pocket had a hole in it. The seam was loose. <laughs> the will fell down uh, between the lining and the and the outside of the coat, and he passed away. And nobody could find the, the will. The lawyer said, I know I had it. You know, we were working on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, there again, the man came to his son in a dream and told him he had 
you know, put it in the pocket of that coat. So look in that coat. They found the will. Let me ask you this, Doctor. What is the physiology behind a dream? Oh, there's a, a long series of chemical changes that change you from, you know, deep sleep, mm-hmm. uh, restful sleep, to dreaming, and then that wears off and you go back into these. There's four stages of dream. I mean, the four stages of sleep. And there's... A, a, a lot of chemical stuff. I don't, you know, uh, it's hard to explain. But uh, the, when you are in dreams, it isn't a physiological thing. It's a thinking thing. Your dream mind mostly thinks associatively. It can be realistic, but it's very seldom. It's natural way of thinking is associated. How long do dreams last, and how many dreams would a person have in the normal course of an evening sleep? Uh, Normally, from four to seven. Short ones to begin with. Mm -hmm. The final dream of the night can almost be 90 minutes. Wow. Do most people dream in color, or do most people dream in black and white, or is it a mixture of both? It can be both, but it's a normally color. Color can be, you know, very meaningful in a dream. Such as? Well, it comes to mind quickly. My sister was an extrovert, and I'm an introvert. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I'd done something stupid being too shy, I'd dream about my sister, and she would be wearing something blue. I made her sad because I didn't express myself enough in front of other people. I was too shy. So that made my extroverted part uh, feel blue, sad. So the the colors in a dream have a definite association with your mood or what's happening in your life at that point? Something, yes. Usually it wouldn't always be... You know, I mean, wouldn't all the, mm-hmm. use color as a important message carrier? But it can definitely can be. In in and your it will have something to something in, to do with your waking life. In in your opinion, doctor, what is the importance of a dream, and what should people look out for in a dream in order to see something significant? Well, it's very complex. Because this associative thinking, the way that dream mind works, Mm -hmm. it has, I have worked with, found seven different limbs. So there's seven different kinds. It can be word association. It can be people association. It can be a universal situation. So there's seven limbs, but each of those limbs has branches. I've got 53 branches. That's complicated. So it takes, and you know that that's why I wrote the book because people have to learn what kinds of things to look for, and that's this that's what my my book is about. So uh, I can't just tell you that it's easy. All right, what happens? Uh, what does a dream tell us, Doctor? If we are we go to sleep at night and we we dream of someone we haven't seen in years um is is there a psychology behind this well that would be the people limb off of the associative thinking trunk and that person could be there because of their name it could be there because of their job Mm -hmm. you associate a time of, of life in your life when you were you know working with that person it could be there because of a particular belief that they are representing. Um, Al Gore and uh, eco, eco, ecology. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. A, pers- a physical trait or a character trait or a psychological trait, like my sister's psychologically extrovert. And uh, sometimes you get uh, an object that represents a person. I dreamed about the big green trash barrel at school to represent the janitor. (laughs) 
So, uh, but they're there usually because of something you associate with that person. What about nightmares? Well, you know, how do we figure nightmares to be part of the human psyche? Well, because sometimes there's something going on in a person's waking life mm-hmm. that uh, is not good, and they're not paying attention to it. So the dream, the subconscious mind knows all this stuff. They, they can go precognitively. They're, they're much deeper than the waking mind. So the psych- the subconscious mind wants to tell you, pay attention to this. Mm-hmm. And if you have a nightmare, it scares you into paying attention. So a nightmare is designed to scare the hell out of us? Yep. Wow. <laughs> Well, that you know, people yeah. can be stubborn. They need it sometimes. But there are so many different dreams. When, when let's say you and I both go to sleep at night and we have a dream pertaining to horses and water fountains and, let's see, um, a flying, would the interpretation of the, the, uh, the horses and the flying and the fountains have the same meaning in my dream as it would in yours? No, not necessarily at all. It's um, what you, the dream mind figures out. Mm-hmm. It can go into your memory bank and find what it needs to use that you, in your memory, would associate with that. Gotcha. So everybody, uh, you know, the idea of looking it up in a dream dictionary. Sure, some symbols are universal, but mostly it's very personal. What are some of the universal symbols that all people can relate to in a dream dictionary? Because that's exactly where I was going with this. You know, there you go into any mm-hmm. bookstore and you go into the yeah. New Age section and there's row upon row upon row of dream books. The funny mm-hmm. part is if you open up book A and look under horse and book B, two different meanings. So, mm-hmm. so how does one know how to better understand their own dreams? Well... Check it to see what it relates to in your, in the dreamer's Mm -hmm. daily life. It's about that particular person. And uh, sometimes, you know, we we have um, like a new new birth in a in a family. That happens to lots of people. So there could be some symbol that would be associated with a new birth. But and and the universal symbols appear that way. But there also could be something in that particular person's life where like if they had a new baby and then, then it, recent, it died early or something, right. they would have a different reaction. So, so different people have different dream meanings for the same, uh, for a multitude of, of symbols that people around the world may think all mean the same thing. So dreams are basically true. very unique. Oh, yes. Very much to the individual dreamer. All right, Doctor, you and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Please stand by. Interesting lady, Exo Nation. We're talking to Dr. Janice Bayless about dreams. Now, Dr. Bayless has a book that's available at Amazon.com forward slash DP forward slash 1466219246. And Dr. Bayless and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news. As the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, 1-800-610-7035, worldwide toll-free, email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. Don't forget, Exxon Nation, help stop human trafficking and human slavery. Visit www.mdsrc.org, and that is the Modern Day Slavery Reporting Center. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net.
Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back, everyone. Dr. Janice Bayless is our special guest to this hour. We're talking about dreams. And uh, tell me, Dr. Bayless, can dreams, uh, you know, help bring physical healings to us? And if so, how? Well, I don't really know how, but I've had a couple of experiences myself. I had uh, something wrong with one of my eyes, Mm -hmm. and I had to call a substitute to teach for me at school made an appointment for the doctor for the next day. And I lay down and take a nap, and I dreamed that I was looking out at the my patio, and there was a puddle there. And in, as I looked at it, something from the puddle came up like a electric firing or something, whatever, and it hit my eye, mm-hmm. and it tingled in the dream. And then when I woke up from the nap, my eye was better. But I had already canceled for the teaching, and I kept that appointment the next day with the doctor. He said, it's just fine. <laughs> I, don't know how the, I don't know how the dream does this precognitive looking into the future. So, but so, I know it can do it. So why are dreams so crazy and complex? Well... When you dream and you see a particular image, that is like the target. But what triggered that particular image is something in the dreamer's subconscious mind. Something the subconscious mind knows is the dreamer will associate with that particular image. and it. But all you see is the target. You don't see the trigger. And tell you, you know, that's why you have to learn the system, how the dream can do all this. So, so why do dreams have to be so complex, so complicated? Why just can't we get a very straightforward message in a dream? Well, the associative thinking process is really a very simple process. Uh, if I take my keys out of my purse mm-hmm. and head toward the door, the dog runs over to the door and is wagging his tail and wants to go for it. He associates my keys with a possible ride. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, we do this all the time when we're awake. Mm -hmm. And this is, that's, it's really a very simple kind of thinking. But, you know, because we're not trained to remember our dreams, and we we often don't even have the target idea, uh, image much less the, and, and and I don't know why, but, you know, our society just doesn't teach us to pay attention to dreams and how dreams can, there's the, I mentioned the people limb had eight branches. Mm-hmm. There's a quality limb with a bunch of branches. There's a word limb with a bunch of branches. There's a psychological limb with a bunch of, with a bunch of branches. Figures of speech and family and all of, n- nobody's teaching us about that. Why not? Well, because I because it is it is complex, and we, you can get along without paying attention to your dreams, but you can get along better if you do pay attention, and that's why I wrote the book. <laughs> If dreams play such a significant part in our lives, why aren't we being taught this? Why do we have to go outside of the traditional learning boxes to find out about dreams? Well, I don't know why. Uh, You know, it seems to me very unfortunate that 
the regular education system hasn't been paying attention. And, and parents say to their children, forget it, it was just a dream. So we grow up thinking not to pay attention. Hmm. It's, Interesting. It's unfortunate. Yeah. I understand that the Indians, the, the, uh, the North American uh, First Nations, believe that their soul actually leaves their body when they dream. Yes, it doesn't doesn't mean that they uh, felt that every time they dream there is because their soul left their body, but that it can happen. Just like a deceased person's spirit can come to you in a dream and tell you where something is. Uh, and I, I've had a couple of these myself, an out-of-body experience in a dream. Can, and, share them uh, with us, would you, Doctor? Pardon? Share them with us. Oh, well, um, uh, it, it's, it's just that, gosh, it's been quite a while since I did ha- actually had the dream. It's just that uh, I was in, in my bedroom, mm-hmm. up at the ceiling, looking down at my body asleep and thinking, this is strange. And I went to visit my mother. And and she told me that she saw me in her dream that night. And then I went back into my body. There there was no, uh, I think I'd probably been reading about that, and to prove to me that it could happen, I had that experience. I've only had it a couple of times. Where does the dream get the images that we have in the dream? I've been told that you can only have an image of a dream in a dream of something that you've seen and yet i've heard from other people that they have seen images in their dreams that they have never seen before so what is the rationale behind this we we have like three main things of the life experiences where we see things mm-hmm. and there are personal experiences there are cultural experiences and there are universal experiences. And especially with the universal uh, experiences, that whether you've had it, had the experience or not, you in your um, uh, superconscious, it's there. They're called archetypes. And so you don't have to have experienced something in mm-hmm. order to have an image of it or in your uh, experience bank. So your subconscious mind can go anywhere in your memory bank or in your archetypal part of your brain. Some people that I've talked to over the years, doctors, tell me of dreams where they're trying to escape something, but they just can't move, or they feel frozen in time. What would this mean in a dream? Look to your daily life. Where is it in your waking life that uh, something is bugging you and kind of after you is something that you're supposed to be trying to, you know, eliminate, and, um, but you haven't been able to do it yet? Mm-hmm. And look to the rest of the dream, maybe, and see if, you can, if the rest of the dream gives you a clue as to how to do that. But you might not get another clue. You just have to look at your daily life and see what it is that's... Let, let me ask you this. As, as, a, as a trained psychologist, I understand you went to uh, Columbia Pacifica University and uh, where you received your PhD in psychology. As a scientist, what do, you know, like when you look at dreams and then you look at dreams as a student of the Edgar Cayce Foundation or the ARE Center in Virginia, uh, Virginia Beach, how do you... How do you balance between being a scientist and being a student of New Age uh, dream technology or dream interpretation? Well, I've just written a white paper about dreaming being a complex system. Mm -hmm. And this complexity theory science is fairly new, but it is scientific, and it's about um, the fact that Dreaming is a, 
process that is actually systematic. That, you, that takes a whole paper to explain. <laughs> your book is entitled, your latest book is entitled uh, Dream Dynamics and Decoding Personal, uh, Practical, Powerful Messages. Um, what was your inspiration behind this book? Well, teaching my students, you know, and finding out, and, and with the Edgar Casey material, dreams are practical. They're related to your daily life, and I think that people need to know that so that they can get the, the help that their subconscious mind mm-hmm. is offering. But 50 years ago, when I first got into this, only the psychological part was being paid attention to at all. Only the psychologists were the only ones, and they and they were only paying attention to your personality and your um, relationships. They weren't paying attention to your finances or uh, your creative projects or anything else, but just your personality and relationships. But but when and it comes when to found, when it comes to the scientific side, how far is the gap between what science is saying compared to what people? who are into the New Age dream philosophy, like the people at the ARC. How far how far apart are these two camps? Well, the, the uh, scientists, if you're into complexity science, mm-hmm. uh, you know, then you're, you're going to be looking for what is the pattern, what is the system, what's really going on. And in the New Age, you just kind of winging it and uh you know usually they they get their their messages so so when you went to the the uh, are as a scientist how did you give anything that these people were saying who were winging it any credibility because they were saying that these i mean these dreams are practical they were relating to their their life that's what and that's what Casey told people. You know, he had he told them about healing dreams and so forth. And um, they, they, I mean, it just made me, it made so much sense to me because that's what I was finding with my students. Mm-hmm. So it's and more of a per- what, so it's more of a personal quest than it is a scientific quest. Yes. But I, I am, as I said, I just wrote this white paper because I want people to understand that dreams are not just a bunch of random firing and not nonsense, that they really do have a system they follow. It's a very complex system. Like I said, I have uh, seven branches and 50, I mean, seven limbs and 53 branches. Mm-hmm. 53 branches is, is a lot. But once you learn what it, you know, that's why I had to write the book because uh, there's no other place I really know that uh, people can find it. And then once you understand it, it makes perfect sense. So, how can dreaming help me in my day to day life? It could be your diet, your exercise, you know, your physical things that you need to do. Mm-hmm. It could be your finances. It could be relationships. It could be a creative problem you're working on. You're trying to design a sewing machine and you have only an idea of a needle with a hole in the blunt end and you have to have a dream to tell you to put it in the pointed end. (laughs) Creativity. Relationships. I've written a book about um, really uh, all about dreams about relationships. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very, all, all the practice, whatever it is that's going on in your daily life that, you know, you could use some help with. Your dreams will try to help you. We've got to take a commercial break, Doctor. Please stand by. Exonation, Dr. Janice Bayless is our special guest. We're talking about dreams this hour here in the Exxon. And uh, Dr. Uh, Bayless has written a book entitled... Dream Dynamics and Decoding Personal, Practical, Powerful Messages, and it's available at Amazon.com. 1-800-610-7035, worldwide toll-free email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on MSN Messenger, 
Exxon Radio TV at hotmail.com and our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. This is the Exxon, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Don't forget, help stop human slavery and human trafficking. Visit the modern day Modern Day Slavery Reporting Center at www.mdsrc.org. My name is Rob McConnell. This is The Exxon. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue talking about dreams with our guest this hour, Dr. Janice Bayless. Away. This is The Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials. How we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. Exonation, uh, Dr. Janice Bayless is our special guest. Uh, she's the author of Dream Dynamics and Decoding, Personal, Practical, Powerful Messages. Um, when you were at, uh, let me see, uh, Columbia Pacifica College, what was your thesis on for your Ph.D.? Uh, I had already uh, written Sleep on It, The Practical Side of Dreaming, mm-hmm. and I used that. Now, uh, the Pacifica, Colum- uh, Columbia Pacifica University, is that a, a mainstay uh, university or is that an online university? Well, uh, no, I, this was long ago before it would be online. It wasn't online. But you actually attended there? Well, uh, it was a kind of a correspondence. Right, because uh, we've we according to our records, uh, there was a court order to uh, issued to the Columbia Pacific University to to uh, cease operating illegally in California. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think uh, what's his uh, the men and women author John Gray, John Gray. Anyway, he went he went to there. His I. His degree is from there too, mm-hmm. but this was years ago. I, I see. So, it, it, so it was a correspondence course, right? Yes. So your your doctorate is through a correspondence school. Yes. 
All right. I want to thank you very much for joining us. It's been great having you with us. Take care of yourself, and I wish you uh, much success with your book. Well, there you have it, Exxon Nation. Another person defrocked here on the Exxon. Correspondent school uh, that was ordered to cease operating illegally in California. Can you imagine that? Somebody coming on the show and pretending they're a doctor. Give them enough rope and they will hang themselves. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. We'll be back on the other side of the news at six and a half minutes past the hour as we continue in the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology and defrocking frauds here in the Exxon. So I guess when it comes to um, Dr. Janice, or should we just call her Janice Bayless since it was a correspondence school doctorate degree, we'll just call her Janice for now. As you see, another one truly does bite the dust. This is the Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell, and we'll be back on the other side of the news as we continue. Whatever you do, don't go away. It's going to get better. I wonder why people call themselves doctors when they're really not doctors. Go to a correspondence school to become a doctor? That's scary. We'll be back. Don't go away.